right. Uh, yeah, you know, talking about, uh, you know, recognizing the, the time of your visitation, you know, what, of what time it is uh, in, in history. And Jesus, you know, dealt with that with the Pharisees in Matthew 16, 1. He says, now the Pharisees and Sadducees came to, up to Jesus and they asked him to show them a sign from heaven, right? And he, Jesus replied to them, when's the evening you say, it will be fair weather for the sky is red. And in the morning it will be stormy for the sky is red and has a gloomy and threatening look. He says, you know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. You know, here, here Israel, their Messiah had come to them. You know, and it was all over the New Testament that, that it was prophesied uh, in great detail uh, the way Jesus would come and be born and crucified and the whole bit, you know. And, um, but they, they didn't know it. They didn't recognize him as their Messiah. And um, in, in Luke, uh, you know, towards the end of his, his ministry there, um, he uh, talks about this again. When he came up, uh, it's Luke, uh, what did I say? 19. Luke 19, yes. Yeah, 41. About 41, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, let's read that. Uh, and Jesus approached and he saw the city. Right, the Jerusalem, you know, the holy city, you know, and he wept audibly over it, exclaiming, "Would that you had known personally, even at least in this your day, the things that make for peace, but now they're hidden from your eyes. Uh, for a time is coming when your enemies will throw up a bank of stakes and, about you and surround you and shut you in on every side and they will dash you to the ground you Jerusalem and your children within you and they will not leave in you one stone upon another because you did not come to know and recognize the time of your visitation and uh, you know that happened to Israel here they were God's chosen people here he uh, Jesus is coming to them through the, you know, lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the son of David, you know, born of the tribe of Judah, right? Here he is doing miracles and signs and wonders in their midst, and, and you know, they, they marveled at all that he knew, and they did not recognize that it was the time of their visitation. They were the chosen people, and, and still are, because of the promise to Abraham, and, but, what the point we'd like to make about that is here we are down at the end of time, in the end, end times, and too many people in the body of Christ that we have these 66 books in the Bible full of prophetic uh, uh, scripture, you know, like 27% of the Bible is, is prophecy, Right? And they don't recognize the time of their visitation is now. That, that Jesus is fixing to come back. And they, they don't recognize it. In the day of, you know, everyone can have a Bible for, you could probably get them free somewhere. But everybody can afford a Bible. Most people have them in their homes, but they're all dusty for lack of use. And recognizing the, the time we're in is very important. Oh, uh, well, are, are you suggesting then, and I think you are, that, that um, there's going to be some negative consequences for not recognizing your time of visitation? Right. I mean, just like there were for Israel, uh, there's going to be for, for Christians too. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of Christians don't believe that. They think, well, you know, once I'm saved, I'm in like Flynn, mm -hmm. right? Well, what, what kind of negative uh, consequences could there be for, for not recognizing that, that uh, this is the time of our visitation? Well, you know, you, off the top of my head, you know, Matthew 25 comes to mind about the five wise virgins and the five foolish virgins. 
right? They, they both had oil. They both had light. They both had lamps. You know, these are Christians. And uh, the five foolish didn't have enough oil, right? And, you know, I, I say this all the time. You know, here we are in the end times, and uh, what, God is got not going to anoint the, the word of God concerning the end times, the book of Daniel, the book of Revelation, and a myriad of other books in the Bible, uh, when he's telling us all throughout the Bible that we should get prepared for that. I mean, he says, you know, who is able to stand before Jesus when he comes, right? So preparation is the big deal. Yeah, well, like I'm thinking, you know, you mentioned Matthew 25. Right before that, at the end of Matthew 24, it, he says, well, who is the, the faithful, thoughtful, and wise servant whom his master has put, put in charge of his household to give others their food and supplies at the proper time? Well, there's one of the perks for being prepared is, is you're going to have a position of leadership. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't necessarily mean that everybody that is in a position of leadership is prepared. But if you are prepared and the others aren't, uh, you know, it reminds me of that, that commercial way back there. Uh, there was some corporation mm -hmm. and, and uh, the guy that had the computer, he, he really had all the knowledge and all the rest of the people are saying, well, how long is it going to take to do that? And they said, well, you know, two weeks on overtime. And they turned to the computer guy and he said, well, two hours. And, and so finally, the whole, the whole project got put to him yeah. because he had the means of dealing with it. Well, you know, that, that's one of the things. He says, blessed and happy and fortunate in, to be envied is that servant whom when his master comes will find him so doing. I solemnly declare to you he'll set him over his possessions. But if that servant is wicked and says to himself, well, my master is delayed and is going to be gone a long time, he doesn't know the time of his visitation. Mm -hmm. And he begins to beat his fellow servants. Boy, there's a lot of that going on in the body of Christ right now. Mm -hmm. And to, to eat and drink with the drunken. Oh, but, you know, we're saved by grace, mm -hmm. right? Um, then the master will come at a day when he does not expect him at an hour in which he is not aware, and he will punish him. Oh, and, and it says, cut him up by scourging mm -hmm. and put him with the pretenders, the hypocrites. And there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. Right. Now, I don't guess that says he's going to hell, but you know that there's a whole lot of hell before hell. <laughs> <laughs> there's a whole yeah. lot of hell here on earth that people can go through. Yeah, uh, you're reading right there, uh, you know, if, if he doesn't prepare himself, if he doesn't you know, be, be a faithful servant and, and a watchman, which Jesus in Matthew, Mark 13 says, what I say to everybody, everybody is to watch. Look, he's saying in verse 50, if he doesn't do that, the master of the house will come in a day when he does not expect him and an hour which he's not aware. Well, wow, Jesus, you just said that back there in verse 36. He says, you know, no man knows the day or the hour, right? Oh, yeah, we hear so, that. So we hear this all the time. So right there, you know, everybody, oh, well, there's no use in going any farther because nobody knows the day and the hour. Well, he's saying right there in verse 50, really the opposite. Yeah, it says if you don't know the day and the hour, you're in trouble. Right, right. He, look, look at Revelation chapter 3. It connects perfectly with that. You know, when he's talking to the, the church of Sardis, you know, and he's chastising themselves, you know, rouse yourself and keep awake, right, in verse 2, uh, and strengthen, reinvigorate what remains to the point of dying. I found uh, not a thing in you, uh, you have done meeting the requirements of God. And he says this, so call to mind the lesson you received and heard, continually lay them to heart and obey and repent. Ooh, repent. Oh, there's a new thing. Uh, in case you will not rouse yourself and keep awake and watch, I will come upon you like a thief and you will not know or suspect what hour I will come. But if you roused yourself, you would know the hour he's coming. That's what he's saying. 
Well, this reminds me too in 1 Peter chapter 2, um, verse 11 and 12, um, you know, where he says that I implore you as strangers and exiles in this world to abstain from sensual urges, evil desires, passions of the flesh that wage war against your souls and conduct yourself properly and honorably among the Gentiles so that although they may slander you as evildoers, they by witnessing your good deeds will come to glorify God in the day of inspection. Mm. You know, so uh, everybody is going to get inspected. Right. God is going to show up on the day and He's going to He's going to call for your papers, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, that word inspection there actually is visitation. Other, it's the same word uh, for, yeah, that's visitation. There for visitation that, yeah. that Jesus used back there in, uh, in Luke 19. The day of visitation, right. Which, what does that mean? Well, um, visitation... Let me see, you know, we were just talking about that. Um, well, I don't have that one here with me. Uh, let, let me. Let me look that up. But while I'm looking that up, what is that scripture in Joel about the, the multitudes yes, in, yes. The, in the valley of in decision? Joel chapter 3. Yeah, Joel chapter 3. It is, yeah. yeah. Let's read that real quick. Which is a real prophetic chapter. You know, he says in uh, verse 12, uh, uh, Let the nations bestir themselves and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I sit and judge all the nations round about. Put in the sickle, for the vintage harvest is ripe. Come, get down, tread the grapes for the wine press is full, the vats overflow, for the wickedness of the peoples is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Okay, here's the, the word study business here. Yeah. Uh, visitation, the, one, the ones that's used there in the New Testament, uh, that Jesus used in Luke 19 and in 1 Peter chapter 2, is number 1984 no. in uh, Strong's Concordance, which is Episcopy, from which we get the word Episcopal. But actually that refers to a bishop. But a bishop is actually an inspector, uh, one who, who um, inspects, one who looks into things. And what I'm getting out of that is not just that God uh, looks into things. You know, kind of like when... When uh, in, in, over in Genesis, uh, he, he said to Abram, well, the, the shriek of Sodom has come up to my ears, so I'm going to go down there and see if it's altogether like what I'm hearing. Well, of course, God knew it was like <laughs> what he was hearing. Yeah. But it's not just that God is going to inspect us, but it's like if we want to be ready, if we're in that valley of decision and we want to be ready for the day of inspection, we need to inspect God's Word. Mm -hmm. Because the other interesting thing was that valley of decision, the word decision in Hebrew is number 2742, karutz, which means to, uh, to be a threshing sledge having sharp teeth. Mm -hmm. Now there is a scripture in Isaiah that actually takes that definition Literally, I mean, it, it uses all of those words in it. And that's mm -hmm. Isaiah chapter 41, uh, verse 14 and through 16. It says, um, Fear not, you worm, Jacob, <laughs> <laughs> you men of Israel. I will help you, says the Lord. Your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I will make you to be a new sharp threshing instrument which mm. has teeth. And you shall thresh the mountains and beat them small and shall make the hills like chaff. Well, see, we all face mountains. It says we have um, human obstacles that, that we, uh, you know, the things in our life that, that are 
troublesome and that we have to overcome. Mm -hmm. Well, he says that, that he will give us the tools to, to beat those things down. Mm -hmm. He says, you shall winnow them and the wind shall carry them away and the tempest or whirlwind shall scatter them. And you shall rejoice in the Lord. You shall glory in the Holy One of Israel. Mm. So that day of visitation doesn't have to be a, something to be, a, oh no. It, it's something we can look forward to if, if we will do the yeoman's work of, of inspecting God's Word and, and uh, searching our own hearts and seeing, you know, get, giving up to God the things that we need to repent of or, or you know, asking Him to change us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. In, you know, it says there in uh, Hebrews, you know, we read this last week, but it, it, in the context of what we're talking about in uh, 9.28, uh, I think it is, yeah, uh, he says, even so it is that Christ having been offered to take upon himself and bear a burden, the sins of many once and once for all will appear a second not time not to carry any burden of sin nor to deal with sin, but to bring to full salvation those who are eagerly and patiently waiting for and expecting him. If you're yeah. eagerly waiting for and expecting Jesus, uh, you know, that's, that's not like uh, the, what the world will receive when he's coming, you know. Uh, Jesus is our friend, you know, but he does have, uh, God has, um, oh, what am I trying to say? Requirements. Uh, requirements. He has requirements. I mean, he expects us all to grow up uh, and come to spiritual maturity and not remain uh, immature in the spirit. Yeah, he says that in 1 Corinthians. It says that specifically. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 is one place. Mm -hmm. um, verse 20 says, um, Brethren, do not be children immature in your thinking. Mm -hmm. Now, you can continue to be babes in matters of evil. In other words, you don't need to know how to do put spells and curses on people. You can, you can be ignorant of all of that. I mean, not ignorant that it goes on, but you don't need to know how to do it. Right. Right? But in your minds be mature men. Right. And over in chapter 13, he says that uh, um, in verse, what is that, 11, said, When I was a child, um, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But now that I have become a man... I am done with childish ways and have put them aside. Yes. So yes. That's, that's kind of what you're talking about. Yeah, here. yeah. In, in Ephesians 4.14, he says, uh, So then we may no longer be uh, children tossed to and fro between chance gust of teaching and wavering with every changing wind of doctrine. Uh, you know, the prey of cunning and... Uh, cleverness of unscrupulous men engaged in every shifting form of trickery in inventing errors to mislead. Oh, you mean every preacher out there doesn't have our best interest in mind? <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> well, go on. <laughs> Don't be naive, folks, especially if there's lots of money involved. Well, there you go. So... The day of our inspection. The day of our inspection. Which the is day the day of, of our visitation. visitation. And it is now. So get prepared. 